Reinhard Heydrich was often described as the ideal National Socialist, but he also attracted less flattering names such as the Blonde Beast or the more accurate Butcher of Prague. Six foot three inches tall, blonde, with rather severe looks and icy blue eyes, he was greatly feared, even, it was often said, by his boss, Heinrich Himmler, who many in the SS believed he would one day replace as Reichsfuhrer. Heydrich was chief of the RSHA, the Reich security main office, meaning that he had command of several terrifying organizations, including the Geheime Staatspolizei, the Gestapo, the Kripo, or Criminal Police, and the SD, the Sicherheitsdienst, the SS Intelligence Agency. He ranked number four in the Nazi power structure after Hitler, Hermann Göring, and Himmler, and had been intimately involved in the exclusion and then the persecution of the Jews. Another of his nicknames was the Man with the Iron Heart, and he certainly despised his enemies and was utterly ruthless in the crimes he engineered against them. It was Heydrich who helped organize the Nazi pogrom against the Jews of Germany in 1938 that came to be called Kristallnacht, or Night of Broken Glass. As deputy Reich Protector of Bohemia and Moravia, as the Czech area of Czechoslovakia was known under German occupation, he effectively ruled as Reich Protector from September 1941 to June 1942, and Heydrich terrorized the Czech people. Heydrich commanded the dreaded Einsatzgruppen death squads that roamed behind the German front in Poland and then in the Soviet Union, executing Jews and huge massacres. And it was Heydrich that chaired the infamous Wannsee Conference in Berlin in January 1942, at which the fate of Europe's Jews was decided and an organized program of deportations and murder put into operation. Heydrich was mortally wounded in Prague on the 27th of May 1942 by a bomb thrown at his car by British-trained Czechoslovak agents, which resulted in his death from blood poisoning on the 4th of June 1942. An elaborate state funeral was held, overseen by Hitler himself, and the SS took violent revenge on the Czechs, raising two villages believed to have sheltered the assassins and eventually murdering some 1,300 people. Never again would the British attempt to assassinate one of Hitler's top men, the reprisals taken against innocent civilians being so terrible after the death of Heydrich. But what many people don't know about Reinhard Heydrich was that he often took time away from mass murder and the horrors that he was engineering to indulge his love of flying, and not just any flying. Heydrich actually flew combat missions as a Luftwaffe fighter pilot, in his mind, he seemed determined to live up to the Nazi ideal of the all-action warrior, in marked contrast to his desk-bound boss, Himmler, and genuinely risk death and injury flying operationally. Heydrich had actually begun his service career in the Navy, joining in 1922. By 1926, he was signals officer aboard the Weimar Republic's flagship, the battleship SMS Schleswig-Holstein, and by 1928 was promoted to Oberleutnant zur See, or First Lieutenant. However, in 1931, Heydrich was discharged from the Navy for ungentlemanly conduct and joined the Nazi Party in Hamburg and the SS shortly after that. In 1935, Hitler announced to the world the formation of a new German air force, or Luftwaffe. Heydrich, by that date an SS Brigadefuhrer and head of the Bavarian Police and SD, began receiving pilot training, gaining his pilot's certificate. As Germany edged towards war, Heydrich's power in the SS continued to grow, and by 1939 he was an SS Gruppenführer, or Major General, but simultaneously held a reserve commission in the Luftwaffe, with the rank of Oberleutnant. Here the story becomes a little murky, depending on which sources you get your information from. According to some, when war broke out in September 1939, Heydrich had himself attached to an operational flying unit, flying the twin-engined Messerschmitt Bf 110, not as a pilot, as he was not qualified on twin-engined aircraft, but flew instead for a short time as a rear gunner on a camera-equipped 110 that made a series of reconnaissance sorties over England and Scotland while the invasion of Poland was underway. This part of Heydrich's Luftwaffe career is hotly debated, and some very circumstantial evidence does exist that he may indeed have flown some operational missions in the early stages of the war, 
but the story remains contentious and problematic. It should also be remembered that on the 27th of September 1939, Himmler created the RSHA, appointing Heydrich to command this huge organisation, so I doubt Heydrich had the time to go on combat joyrides with the Luftwaffe. Setting this aside, Heydrich definitely completed fighter pilot training at the first fighter pilot school at Verneuchen, Heydrich qualifying on the Messerschmitt Bf 109E1. Himmler was naturally very keen that Heydrich not fly operationally, for obvious reasons, but Heydrich evidently wanted to prove himself, and after badgering his boss, he was permitted to join an operational unit for a short stint of combat flying. In mid-April 1940, Heydrich, holding the rank of Hauptmann or Captain in the Luftwaffe Reserve, joined the 6th Squadron of Jagdgeschwader 77, or Fighter Wing 77, based at Kristiansand Kievik in southern Norway for a one-month attachment. The most feared man in the Third Reich, after Himmler, now slotted into the officer's mess of a frontline fighter unit, and according to his contemporaries, SS General Heydrich was a highly motivated and aggressive pilot, but friendly and jovial off-duty. Heydrich flew many patrols and reconnaissance missions, but doesn't appear to have seen any direct combat. However, on the 13th of May 1940, he was lucky not to have been killed when his BF-109E1 turned over during a takeoff accident at Stavanger Sola. Thereafter, Heydrich resumed his SS duties as Obergruppenführer, or Lieutenant General, but brought back with him from Norway two decorations, the Iron Cross Second Class and the Front Flight Clasp in Silver normally awarded for 60 operational combat missions, which perhaps adds some weight to the notion that Heydrich had already made some operational flights earlier in the war. Himmler expressly forbade his deputy from any more operational flying, but the temptation was too great for Heydrich, and much to Himmler's alarm, nonetheless returned to operational flying for another short stint at the height of Operation Barbarossa, the German invasion of the Soviet Union. Just as his Einsatzgruppen death squads were roving the newly conquered territories, executing Jews in their thousands. By now holding the rank of Major or Major in the Luftwaffe, Heydrich rejoined JG 77, this time its second squadron in mid July 1941, at Balti East in Moldavia. He flew himself to the squadron in his personal BF 109E7 fighter that he was allegedly gifted from General Oberst Ernst Udet of the Luftwaffe for favours received. Heydrich flew several combat patrols over Soviet lines until on the 22nd of July 1941 he came the closest to genuine personal harm until blown up in Prague the following year. Heydrich was flying with his wingman, Georg Schermböck and the pair were just over 200 kilometers east-northeast of base when they came under Soviet flak. Heydrich's plane was hit, and he made a successful wheels-up belly landing on flat ground, near the village of Olshanka. Heydrich was uninjured, though shaken, by the turn of events. The fourth most powerful man in Germany was now stuck behind enemy lines, armed only with a pistol, and facing an enemy that would dearly have liked to get their hands on him. Fortunately for Heydrich, the Soviets didn't know about his activities as a pilot, but he was still in serious danger of capture by the Red Army. His wingman radioed Heydrich's position to base, and due to the status of the missing pilot, you can imagine the panic at JG-77 if it failed to do everything in its power to find and rescue him, and of Himmler's wrath should Heydrich fall alive into Soviet hands. A strong fighting patrol from a nearby German infantry division was quickly dispatched towards where Heydrich's 109 had come down, and Heydrich was found and rescued within a few hours. Again, depending on which sources you consult, it happened exactly as I've just recounted, or we have Heydrich's own embellished story of being on the run for several days behind Soviet lines until rescued by troops not of the army but of one of his own Einsatz commando units. However, both the commanding officer of JG-77 and Heydrich's wingman, not to mention the squadron diary and the records of the German army unit that rescued him, all show that Heydrich was located and rescued within hours of his forced landing. 
The alternative story appears to have originated with Heydrich and was later repeated by Himmler himself at Heydrich's funeral oration in June 1942 and post-war in 1950 by Heydrich's widow in an interview. Heydrich's second stint of operational flying had lasted a week and saw him receive the Iron Cross First Class and Himmler expressly forbidding any more such foolishness. Heydrich wore his combat decorations and pilot's badge proudly on his uniform, knowing that they intimidated the pen-pushers and bureaucratic generals and other SS and Gestapo officials that he routinely dealt with. He knew that they further burnished his reputation as a brave man of action, an ideal German and SS officer. Hitler was horrified when he saw these decorations on Heydrich's tunic and also ordered no more flying in combat, though Heydrich continued to fly non-operationally, often piloting his plane during shuttle flights between his headquarters in Prague and Berlin. The eagle-eyed among you will note that later in the war Himmler also sported a Luftwaffe pilot's badge on his tunic, but unlike Heydrich, who had earned his by training as a fighter pilot, Himmler's Combined Pilot's Observer Badge with Diamonds was an honorary award, the personal gift of Reichsmarschall Göring. Some 80 high officials and generals received such baubles, and a few chose to wear them. Perhaps in doing so, Himmler was aping his former subordinate Heydrich, a man he both admired and some say feared, who encapsulated the very ideals that Himmler personally failed to measure up to. And if you are wondering what became of Heydrich's flying decorations and other medals, at least one set still exists, pinned to the tunic that still adorns his corpse, as Heydrich is the only senior Nazi whose body still exists, buried in a now unmarked grave in central Berlin. See my video about a recent attempt to dig him up by grave robbers, probably to steal his decorations and also his famous SS honor sword. Link in the end screen. Many thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.